is having a very big uh, what you say like uh, thought and uh, attraction towards blockchain and they have done heavily and they have enough towards blockchain how they have deployed in multiple areas now in the interest of data center how blockchain can matter a lot and how we can have a diversified information so that it helps us to use the current what our data center infrastructure and how we can use it the same for the future uh, suresh whatever you said now uh, coming on uh, blockchain how blockchain is really going to change our lives or uh, uh, data centers and so on let's take example uh, of a cryptocurrency called bitcoin uh, bitcoin doesn't run on any of the data center so that's how and it's a completely successful business model as far as a cryptocurrency business is a concern uh, so that's a way to look at how your future uh, uh, businesses can run on a decentralized data centers so that's a way to look at that's what we will discuss when we deep dive into blockchain area so we have some area blockchain 1.0 which was always successfully uh, implemented by uh, more than 1500 cryptocurrency so far in the world so bitcoin ethereum these are the examples around that so so what enterprises like banks or insurance companies or uh, uh, agriculture or uh, supply chain or trade finance companies will look at those are blockchain 2.0 use cases wherein the way we work with our centralized systems uh, centralized database with a front end calling centralized database either through apis or uh, business logic lies in between uh, middleware so that will be changed in a way that centralized database will be distributed database it will not be located at one location it will be located at a multiple location which is at a, that agreed network and which will be called by the distributed uh, set of uh, clients through smart contracts so smart contract is the next wave to look at blockchain 2.0 and blockchain 3.0 will be fun for all of us when we get into web 3.0 today we are at web 2.0 kind of a client server we access our web application so on so just imagine your client browser is also part of blockchain network and the whole infrastructure which we put wherein like take example payment system where we send a money from one mobile to another mobile so you can imagine how many sub systems are there in that uh, uh, so you have a beneficiary server you have a uh, remitter server Uh, you have a uh, trusted agency server like Ma master visa in between so if you imagine this whole payment ecosystem ca can be converted into blockchain but looking at a technical maturity of blockchain we will not opt for that use case but certainly there are several such use cases you can really see that is an advantage towards next level of the infrastructure so that is why multiple cloud service providers also talking with the other cloud service provider so that they come up with an interoperable uh, cloud services so wherein your complete network take example insurance chain wherein you have aadhar database there or aadhar system followed by insurance company or set of insurance companies or a customer like us are having their own uh, set of uh, mobile applications on their phone we believe rice is there since it has gone from 1.0 to 3. Point, what are you saying so rice of blockchain is there as of now uh, sudin will also add uh, inputs to that i think we have on the verge of uh, pilot pos is certainly in 2018 we'll see at least in india some very good adoption of those use cases in abroad uh, i think in asia it's a 9% adoption of a blockchain and within india it could be point one of that what is happening in the across the world and that's how you have to see ki what's really happening in uh, us uk canada russia small countries like estonia malta gibraltar now they're taking their <coughs> their business or their governance on the next level and they're acting as a template for the uh, rest of the world so that's the opportunity to really look at a blockchain as a Uh, technology is one of the technology apart from ai iot and and it can be like combination of ai blockchain or iot ai blockchain that's how will be the future so that is why it is very important for a cloud service providers or a banks who are relying on these uh, cloud service provider to look at this certainly there will be lots of optimization on a storage bitcoin has a complete bitcoin network if you see the size it's not more than 160 gb which has started in way back in 2009 and we are it is almost 10 years gonna happen so you can just imagine the your traditional ecosystems payments and so many how much storage will be required on that uh, on those uh, business models so that's the opportunity let's uh, the future technology the drives the innovation yeah. where the blockchain is one of that it will improve the data center so next uh, we will come to humble innovator who is from sbi who has done enough on the innovation side and uh, keeping blockchain is one of the content where how data centers for banks is going to enable if rise of blockchain is going to material or the innovation humble innovation creates more 
where we have been forced to use such technology. Do you know how important is blockchain, especially in the BFSI, where a combination of blockchain with something called DLT, a distributed ledger system, or a distributed ledger technology, is with, with such a combination, it is possible for a bank or for a fintech to build an entire financial services superstore building blockchain. That's how important it is. By 2030, it is predicted by Gartner and some other independent research organizations that all the development of banking or financial services will be fintech based. It will be based on blockchain. That's how important it is. So you would have a situation where your current annuity IT will run. And by meaning the current annuity IT is your our core banking systems, our payment systems, our risk systems, they will run. But on the sunrise, and it's already starting, we will have a whole set of your fintech services that could either be used by banks or financial services or by fintechs or startups or by a collaboration, okay, whatever the model uh, is, is going to be. But that is the power of blockchain. So blockchain plus DLT is very much aligned to a banking and financial service sector because what is banking? Banking, we have been using ledgers when the first ledger was probably used in the 1400s. And then you had, uh, in my previous life, there's Barclays, which is, a three, uh, which is already a 330-year-old bank. The entire banking service all over the world is today used as, uh, as, as a ledger, right? Now, with this combination of blockchain and DLT, and then as uh, Prasanna Wati described as smart contracts, I think with this combination, you would now be writing all the new fintech services. So what, you know, what do banks do, right? We collect money, we move money, we lend money, we secure money, we advise on money. All this can be developed on blockchain, okay? Now the blockchain, what we refer to in, at least in India, primarily, is private permissioned blockchain. It is not the Bitcoin or the crypto-based public permissionless blockchain. So meaning that uh, because of the rules here, the authorities and regulators have already said that uh, cryptocurrency and tokenization is not a legal tender or, or is, is, not, is not, well, they're not said it's not illegal, but they're what, what they've said, it's not legal, right? So what uh, we did last year, and that was a part of the uh, collaboration that we did on, on, on blockchain, we got uh, more than 30 banks together, uh, call them to uh, call them to lunch to our uh, SBI uh, global headquarters, IT headquarters at Navi Mumbai. I think even Prasanna had come, uh, right? And they liked the lunch, we liked the lunch, and we said for, uh, you know, let's shed our ecosystem, right? There's a lot of ecosystem in the financial services, you know, believe me or not, including the IT crowd, okay? Uh, of course, uh, <laughs> since I'm not officially in the bank, I can say that now. Uh, but so I, I, we, we said, let's shed our ecosystem, Let's work in an ecosystem because technologies like blockchain cannot be an all emerging tech. It cannot be run in isolation. You just cannot create your own blockchain, whether it's permissioned or permissionless or whether it's public or private and say, okay, I have you know, done the solution. It has to work in, 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 in collaboration, in unison, right? And if you, uh, and, and a lot of people ask me, you know, uh, you know, what are the use cases for blockchain? Just put on your TV or just read the news, and you'll have all the use cases of blockchain. There's conflict of interest which can be solved. There's fraud which can be solved. There's guarantees, LOUs, which can be completely digitized through blockchain and uh, made sure that uh, right from the origination of the transaction to the end of the transaction, everything can be tracked, okay? Because blockchain, by nature, you can only update to that chain of records. You cannot delete any record, okay? So the, 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 it, there is immense future. Uh, there still needs a lot of work to be done. Last year with, uh, uh, with the DCB Bank, with uh, Mr. Lohar, and also with IDFC Bank and other banks like Bob and ICICI, uh, we also have uh, Middle Eastern banks, uh, NBD and Dofar, uh, and of course even some smaller banks, uh, in fact even some cooperative banks. We did 10 pilots. We prioritized on what we really want to do. 
Uh, this year, we want to take those pilots into production. Some of the initial pilots that we will take into production this year are based around KYC for corporates, as well as a cross-border remittance, as well as a exchange for assets, maybe bad loans or uh, you know just asset monetization. So these are the kind of uh, projects and solutions we want to uh, take across. There needs to be a lot of work still that remains to be done. One of the, uh, I would not say barriers, but compared to other uh, countries uh, who have already built regulatory sandboxes. So for example, your Monetary Authority of Singapore has already gone and built up regulatory sandboxes. They've also got APIs which they've exposed. Uh, Dubai has also done that. Uh, UK has also done that. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done in India. Uh, and the uh, importance of uh, having a regulatory sandbox is that fintechs and startups and banks can also validate the solution. Now, four-letter bank, IDFC, so how the uh, blockchain empowers you, and it's a fresh bank coming out with so many innovations and things. And how do you feel and how do you connect the rise of blockchain, connect back to your data centers? My co-panelists have already mentioned some of the very good use cases of uh, blockchain. So. Uh, cryptocurrency is one of the very uh, known uh, because it's a very common, commonly being uh, used, told across the globe nowadays. But uh, <clears throat> I'll take you back uh, when uh, banking was being done uh, in the physical uh, laser book. So back in 80s, when we have very isolated systems, gradually we moved to core banking systems, wherein. wherein we have integration with multiple systems, whether from the trade, treasury, and uh, payment settlement systems. Gradually, uh, now we are talking about a, an, in an in a, in a age wherein those centralized laser has moved to the decentralized uh, area. So with the current uh, tremendous uh, benefit of the internet and the technology, the kind of technology what we have nowadays, so the same distributed laser is getting uh, distributed over the distributed uh, network. So the basic concept on the blockchain, when we talk from the BFSI point of view, there are four or five key use cases. As uh, my co-panelist has mentioned about that uh, fraud related areas, risk management, uh, payment and settlement is one of them. But the current trend, if you see the globally what is happening, that at one point of time, the uh, central uh, uh, bank of uh, different countries, even in our country also, they have not yet come up with a very uh, specific guidelines uh, that how the BFSI is going to go uh, get regulated or going to use the blockchain as a solution. On the parallel, you may also see that the research and development wing of the same central bank, uh, even in uh, our context, Reserve Bank of India and IDRBT. So as uh, they mentioned that IDRBT along with many of the banks, they have come up with a kind of uh, initial POC, uh, which have gone live also. Some of the uh, cross-border settlement were being also performed. Uh, some trade transactions were being done. But so far, multiple tech giants across the globe, uh, in a silo, they have started developing their own blockchain network. So be it IBM, uh, they have come up with a tie-up with the Bank of Montreal, UBS, and they have developed their own blockchain. In the similar way, Google is coming up with their own blockchain, then various other uh, key technology players. But the biggest challenge, what is going to happen is that the concept uh, of blockchain, which was more on uh, distributed uh, laser over the distributed network, is not something which is going to meet when you have different uh, multiple autonomous block main, uh, blockchain. So the, how are you going to address those particular scenarios? So once the federation or the trust gets built up, between the different blockchains which are being built up or developed by the various tech giants across the globe. So then only we can see that how the real potential of blockchain is going to go uh, evolve. So that's the one aspect what I can mention. The another thing as uh, Prasanna mentioned that uh, uh, EKYC related stuff uh, which is entirely uh, driven by the UIDI uh, things. But uh, can you imagine the same UIDI database if it is uh, put in a decentralized manner in our country. 
So such a big use case in terms of various kind of services what we offer uh, could be on the legal tech side or the regulatory side that all can be easily solvable just because one centralized database of Aadhaar which are right now at a centralized uh, point if it makes de decentralized and accessed over multiple channels and being ac uh, various peoples are being given the ownership so that's one of the aspect what we can uh, think of wherein uh, we can also discuss more on uh, going yeah great great insights the new technologies and part of data center really blockchain matters a lot I have a few points to make on this because uh, blockchain ai iot these are very exciting buzzwords uh, just about a year back, I was in San Francisco and uh, at an event I was asked this question that how do I see blockchain technologies, how do I see these kind of technologies threatening the existence of banks. Um, point is that most of the fintechs, the fintech challenge as we were talking about it last year, uh, and, and these are technologies which are enabling fintechs. Uh, the biggest difference that a bank makes is that it can have a balance sheet which fintechs cannot. There's an assets and liabilities business there which uh, has to be thought through. The reason I'm making this point is that, you know, one of the panelists said that this is an exciting technology. And I often tell my teams, uh, uh, you know, a lot of them get excited about uh, these buzzwords. And especially uh, the word innovation, the word digital, these are the most misused words with everyone having their own meanings to it. Here it's a humble innovator. Sorry? A, this cast is more to do with a humble innovator. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, I keep telling my teams that uh, while you keep an eye out for innovative technologies, also keep an eye on what your bank is, what, what your balance sheet is, what is your PNL, what is your business, what is your legacy. One of the key things which uh, you know, a fellow panelist said was about that these are exciting technologies and you can do a lot of good work on it. But can you plug it into your legacy core banking systems very easily? And at what cost? What is the revenue that you will make out of these things uh, using blockchain technologies? So that was point number one, uh, that you know, let's not become technology hobbyists. Uh, you have to take a, we are all commercial enterprises and you have to take a look at what is the valuation, what is the revenue that comes out of this. I'm excited about blockchain as well. I'm not saying negative things about blockchain. I'm saying that if you're setting up a new bank, adopt this technology, this, this is the way to go. Second point is that these are ecosystems which have to be curated. These cannot be, you cannot be a blockchain bank within yourself unless you're a new startup. And, and you know, as you mentioned, a few banks got together and they did. Our core banking provider runs a similar network with 17 banks, um, which we are also thinking about subscribing to, etc. but the point boils down to when you invest in these technologies, how will you get your returns on it? And what will be the revenue that you'll make out of these things? So if the use case is fund transfer, I'm yet to see a bank which makes revenue of fund transfers. If the use case is fraud, yes, there is a particular aspect of uh, risk cost which is associated with it, which you can quantify. Point is that please take a look at where you're going to use this technology, evaluate your existing uh, infrastructure, and then come to it. And, and just a couple more quick points. Uh, the third point is how many of us have heard of tech, uh, you know, infrastructure like Linux One? Anyone over here? This was launched in 2015. Now, if this in this audience I asked this question and more than 50% raised their hands, I would be really surprised because this is not very well heard of. And secondly, do we really need to know of these technologies? No. This, this is the job of the DC providers, etc. And this is where the point I'm coming to is as banks don't get into investing heavily into infrastructure for blockchain and uh, these kind of solutions, take a look at third-party providers and insist that you get these on an OPEX model rather than uh, you know, investing your own capital into it. The reason I'm making this point is because the topic is around blockchain and data centers. So uh, this is more to the data center vendor providers to actually ensure that they set up these kind of infrastructures, keeping an eye on the future. The final point that I wanted to make on this is that, uh, and it's a little bit anecdotal, uh, linked to my first point as well. 
How many of us remember big data? Now, this was a big thing about five, six years back. Everyone in India was talking about big data. And one of my, uh, you know, peer group actually was speaking very excitedly about it. And he came from a banking institution and I asked him that, why? Why big data? I mean, what's the definition of big data is more was around velocity, veracity, volumes, etc., unstructured. Do we really use those things in our, uh, you know, are we a cabbage.com organization? We are not. We are still, you know, using traditional methods of banking uh, where our assets uh, are still driving our business cases, uh, are driving the revenues. Uh, and, and uh, these are the evolutions which are happening. So you actually need to be very clear about what is the use case, how you're going to deploy it, think it through. If you're setting up a new bank, go ahead and do this. This, this is the technology of the future. This, this is definitely, you know, what you could. And, and, and if you take a look at it, uh, networks like Swift. Swift has just closed out a complete uh, POC or using blockchain technologies for their fund transfers. And, and, and these are the kind of people that you need to subscribe to rather than building your own networks and trying to see. There's nothing like a side chain still. So when banks talk about coins, uh, when city talks about city coin, when three banks together have gotten together and they're talking about coins, these, these will all become parallel ecosystems. None of them talk to each other laterally. There's nothing like a side chain concept which was propagated. Some, some people spoke about this, but how many standards will it will will you adopt? How many standards as a financial institution will you take up? And, and sure. that's the point that you have to be careful about. So you feel like from a part of Madhut keeping financial services, how you keep your data centers on, and uh, it's a general phenomenon how people are used to such new technologies, which is going to build you people to the next. Level. As of now, blockchain seems to be uh, the next big uh, thing since sliced bread. So. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of uh, uh, things going on, and uh, like uh, 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 Sir also mentioned just now, uh, there's a there's a big gap between IT's understanding of what blockchain is and what businesses' understanding is in terms of how you can apply it and where you can apply it. So a bit of convergence uh, there is something which is yet to be achieved. And uh, the technology, uh, uh, it, basically blockchain is a concept. So it is, it is basically, uh, you can say it's a shorthand for a bundle of uh, uh, distributed uh, digital technologies. And there are a lot of things which falls under the storage and the processing and the transaction part of it, which together helps you build the blockchain uh, concept as such. And uh, uh, the, the, the whole thing, if you go back to, I mean, people among us who would have been uh, computer science students, and if you would have studied data structures in your days, this is no different from, this is basically started from your Merkle trees, and if you have studied the tree structures in your days, you would be able to better relate to how, you know, the blockchain works. So to a simplified extent, it is basically where it uh, boils down to. Now, if you have to look at the use cases, there are a lot of POCs, I mean, going on in the market, a lot of things which a lot of our panelists touched upon in terms of uh, use cases that we can apply on. You really have to look at it in terms of, uh, uh, I would say, four things. Uh, it is not a replacement for decentralized databases. It's not a replacement for decentralized databases. If uh, you have a use case where you require a lot of confidentiality and performance, then probably this is not the thing that you would want to go for, at least at this moment, where it is still uh, got to mature, and I think probably it is still unoptimized. But if you have a use case wherein you are looking at disintermediation and you are looking at a lot of redundancy and fault tolerance in your systems, in your environment, that's the point probably when you would really uh, look at blockchain. So when, uh, you know, sir, touched a point, uh, you, you touched upon a point where you said that you were asked a question uh, wherein they were asking you about the future of banks in terms of blockchain, whether, you know, if I understood it correctly, that, I mean, in terms of their survival. The, the thing is that if, if you are giving the authority in somebody else's hand to manage the data records for you, for example, institutions like banks, or there's somebody who is an intermediary who's, who's keeping the records for you and doing those transactions for you, who's kind of stamping it for you. 
If you get into the blockchain mode, you are probably removing the need of that intermediary, which basically means that you can do away with the processes and the people hired to take care of those processes. And if the code matures, then and it's debugged, and if it's into place, and then it's it's a lot cheaper to maintain than having you know those things into place, uh, those organizations into place. So this intermediation starting from a small level, maybe it can graduate to a bigger level tomorrow, we never know. But those are the kind of advantages if you are looking at, make sense. False tolerance, redundancy, huge, huge benefit that comes uh, from blockchain. Because here you really don't have to worry if one node or a couple of node, uh, I'm, I'm assuming that we know the basics of blockchain here is that if it fails, you know, it will really take time for the entire thing to come to a grinding halt before, you know, things start falling. It, it's pretty much like how Google works. I mean, you work on a fast and cheap kind of a model where you build a lot of redundancy which leads to scalability. So you have twins for everything. You have redundancy for everything. So one or two nodes shutting down in a time does not bring your systems down and people can still work. So that's again a huge use case. But if you want confidentiality, so like some of us mentioned here, there is, there's no delete option once you put anything on blockchain. If you have made any changes, it stays there. The transaction is recorded. <coughs> now in the financial world, and not just in the financial world, even I mean in your businesses, you have to really think this through, that the information that you're putting onto blockchain, I mean, is it, I mean, is, is it viable for you? Is it making sense for you? Are you okay with it that that data is immutable? Are you okay with it that the data is not going to get deleted from there ever? If you are okay with it, then you have a use case for blockchain with you. But if not, then a centralized database is something you need to go ahead with because the price that you pay is a little higher, but I think that the value that you drive out of the confidentiality you are maintaining is way more. So that's, that's, that's something you need to think about in terms of your business. If you come to performance, your blockchain is always going to be a little slower than your centralized database because while it does everything that your regular database does, you also do three more things. You do signature verification, you have to go through the consensus mechanism, and you have to work for the redundancy. So you will always be doing these three additional steps. So performance point of view, I mean, we don't know if tomorrow how you enhance these, but these three additional steps will always be there. So you have to really think through what you can apply, where you can apply. Okay. So you, you are putting towards like data center empowerment in terms of these are the things which you can do in house and bringing that blockchain as a technology try to grasp it still it is not mature to the current what we can it, use it, as it, is, it has it has time to uh, come sure. to so come we to will it. listen to some of the use case sure. because somebody has already done and uh, blockchain means personal or that's a name which has created outside the world so let us hear from him to say yeah. how really blockchain matters a lot like whether what are conditions he is talking about is still not matured or we are far ahead where a data center is not just an option blockchain has so many other facilities features which is utilized by a bank like dcp so i think uh, you have put a very nice views and followed by Mr. Very nice view to look at blockchain. What's the situation of blockchain now? Now, if you talk about a confidentiality or a centralized database advantages, or if you look at buzzwords like blockchain, AI, IoT, let's look at the buzzword we called as an internet in '95, and let's look at a buzzword of same internet today. It has transformed your life. You, you can just order a pizza or anything on the internet, look on a mobile, and it's possible. Ask anybody who was living in the era of 95, let's do that thing in 95. They will say, what is this guy talking all about? So that's the way to look at an every technology. In 2030, we will not talk about blockchain. What we will talk about the use cases on the blockchain. We thought of browser coming in our life and building on those uh, great innovations like Flipkart and Paytm or uh, Swiggy and everything is all different business models are coming up. So that's the way to look at these technologies will always will come and help us. So that's what your nice view. Look at the use cases, identify the use cases, whether these use cases are relevant, then find out the technology uh, supporting to that. So similarly, there is a need of a, a technology which will really come and create a trust between two systems or more than two systems, or a trust between more than two human beings while they are doing their traditional operations like buying, selling land, or real estates, buying insurance, 
can it be done seamlessly without man in middle? Can it be done without kind of a settlement reconciliation? We always look at that situation, right? Let's just have a straight through processing application. But again, that straight through processing application will require some kind of a monitoring. Some kind of man has to come there, see whether it's running or not. So that's the answer to look at the blockchain comes and say, oh, hey, I am there and I can really give these all these uh, solutions provided you configure it well, right? You have said the consensus. The consensus is in the brain of all types of blockchains. Now, let's look at Bitcoin and the consensus there is a proof of work. And the way it is being configured in 2009, that is why today it's taking more than one hour to settle one particular transaction. At times it takes more than two days to settle actual transactions. Way it could have anticipated that much load in 2008, they could have done that job better. So now these consensus are different type of consensus. So you and me can come together and define our own consensus without any much of validation. Let me do the transaction per second. Like I would say 50,000 transactions per second being configured in that blockchain. It is possible. And there are some examples, there are some experiments are already being done. You just let me know what type of throughput you want on blockchain. Just like an internet provides you throughput, just put that kind of a hardware, we can really provide that kind of a throughput. Look at the quantum com uh, computing also coming in our way, that will be an additional boost for the performance aspect. But Prasuna, any aspect, you use case which talks more about consumer, customer is getting benefited or su suppliers, yeah, yeah, yeah. anybody is getting benefited. You so can that, add on. So I, I'll come coming to the use case, like before getting into the use case, you need to see whether that use case is feasible or not. That's what I uh, spoke about uh, the challenges like performance or uh, Ideally, use, when you identify the use cases of blockchain, you have to identify three types of use cases. You look at any use case, it, it will be only for identity, who has done that particular transaction. Like, so identity and relevant type of use cases will come under blockchain. Or another one is record keeping. You want to keep a record safe and secure, want to delete, not delete. It's again up to our, us, how do you configure that? Con uh, so far, the way it is being defined is immutable. And if tomorrow I want, for example, Corda, which is the next level of a blockchain, it's not actually blockchain, it is a distributed ledger technology. And they have configured that they want. Looking at the use cases, biggest use cases, I would say UN come in the uh, 2013 and say by 2030, we will have a solution for all the 17 sustainable development guidelines where they say no hunger, no poverty, everything is seamless, everything happens that way, and blockchain is the answer for that. This is being discussed in a last Davos meeting also where almost spokesperson including Narendra Modi or uh, many more presidents of the multiple countries have said data, big data as well as the blockchain AI will be the driving factor for the next level of the governance. So these are the biggest use cases we'll talk about. After that, when we look at our country, AP government is looking at land registration. They have done proof of concept with the multiple uh, partners. And it's a learning stage. As you rightly said, technology has a learning curve. So today, there are four aspects to take care of a technology like education. We don't have that much blockchain developers the way we have DBAs available. Or there, is a, there are less number of technology companies, like everybody is a very much matured, like Infosys, Microsoft. They are very much matured in centralized systems. Let's look at more maturity of tech companies. Then support from government, you have seen multiple government, more than 20 governments are supporting blockchain. Similarly, India is also looking at it. They have also started st uh, studying it, although they say no directly to the set of a cryptocurrency, but they are at the same time, they are studying which are the use cases will come onto the blockchain. Take example, in a community, we run this Pangrain ecosystem, right? Wherein we do a transaction with a rupee card, and that amount directly gets to the issuer of that farmer. Before that ecosystem, there was a lot of uh, trust system issues, corruption. Next level, can I really, really build a wheat coin, which is in, in favor of the community of those farmers and which is without cash, without settlement, which happens in the acquiring end in Pangrain. So that's a way to look at those use cases. But uh, when you identify use cases, do not go for those use cases for which you have already put some infrastructure. Go for those use cases where Nothing has happened and there you need trust between more than uh, two uh, stakeholders uh, or uh, two subsystems. So IoT, there is a one aircraft company manages supply chain of all their aircraft parts on uh, supply chain and each and every IoT device would put in into uh, the air, that aircraft is sitting on a blockchain and that's a mature ecosystem. So yesterday I was talking, day before yesterday I, was, I met one guy, they have done under UN uh, project in Nepal. So all that aid comes to that uh, uh, people in uh, Nepal. So that's complete ecosystem is managed on, on uh, Ethereum blockchain. 
same is they are replicated to Bangladesh. So this is what now has happened on the centralized systems. And that is why there is an opportunity to bring on these kind of use cases on blockchain kind of an ecosystem. You talk about more use cases like energy trading or a solar panel trading, which is quietly the next level use case, which is already matured in Canada and US. And similar use case in uh, Himachal Pradesh, somebody has implemented it. And uh, let, let's look at uh, China. China is building their own internet, which is running on a blockchain and the uh, renewable energy. That's how we to look at blockchain as that power. Right? So these small use cases like supply chain, which uh, as Sudhin has rightly said, supply chain is a massive use case on blockchain. Ad agencies, what they do and how much they earn by putting some bots, uh, hypothetical bots, by saying this, this particular person has clicked that particular ad and they earn out of that. Blockchain will come there and say this is an authentic person has done the click and that's how. That is why Google has not adopted blockchain so far because they have all work or all the business around uh, ads or uh, bigger companies. They will adapt in their, their ways. Uh, other use cases, if you look at uh, agriculture or uh, if you look at trade finances, which is an, uh, another uh, big use case. If, you, if I would have, somebody would have asked me, please create an other ecosystem for your country today, certainly I would have chosen for a blockchain out there. Considering I want a consent from an uh, end user, my other is being utilized. He will give a consent that, and you can really track the complete transaction on a blockchain. Today, what's happening? Uh, is being tracked only at the centralized system at Aadhaar. And what's happening in the frauds are happening with the outside of the, although we are coming with the UIDA 2.0, 2.5, various uh, uh, mandates from the UIDA, and they are really keeping that ecosystem. But uh, blockchain could have given age. But as Mr. Amin rightly said, right now, these are all concept stage. Lot to do on the technology maturity on performance, interoperability from one blockchain to another blockchain, how this blockchain can really work together where Microsoft is doing a nice experiment with the Cocoa framework. They're putting all the different blockchain framework under one layer. And that's how to look at, uh, bring more skill set, create more awareness around these technologies, and uh, create awareness in your companies, like how do you realize business value? As you rightly mentioned, create those use cases. Then you figure out, is it a blockchain, current state, or is that what new invention we have to do in blockchain? So somebody has spoken about IDRBT, wherein IDRBT is working on uh, their, our own, our own blueprint of a blockchain. They will not rely on Ethereum, Hyperledger, which is coming from abroad. So they are creating their own blueprint of a blockchain, which will be utilized for our use cases in India. Like they have come up with the NEFT RTJ system. Similarly, they want to create their own where banks like DCB and many other banks are part of that ecosystem. So, the, in a nutshell, there are multiple use cases under POCs and uh, pilot, and you will see over a period of three, four years, we will not much talk about blockchain, but improvised version of blockchain and use case on top of that. And certainly other buzzwords like AI, which is now very much in the mainstream, people have started utilizing it. Some of the companies like uh, big, big data uh, uh, blockchain is one company, they have created an, uh, system which has a both centralized as well as a uh, decentralized in infrastructure. You just deploy that and choose which infrastructure you want to utilize. Is it decentralized or centralized? That's the choice they are given. And that's, that's, that's kind of a lot of new things has happened which was not happening way before 2015. So I think in the last one, two years, we have given a lot of new companies are coming up. I think in 2017, there were hardly, 2016, there were hardly 10 companies in blockchain which are doing massively good. There are 100 plus. NASCOM, which is done, uh, uh, they are doing hackathon. I have seen at least 500 companies are trying in multiple sectors. So I think it's a POC pilot stage for any emerging technology. There is always a hype circle. So I think blockchain is a part of that. AI is a part of that, but certainly, when new technologies like quantum computing will come to support the current bottlenecks of blockchain and AI, so after five, six years, we'll be very happy to say we were part of this journey and we have really implemented those real use cases. Great, great. Great insights. Nicely put with the use cases, at least Prasanna means blockchain, so that message has come out. And uh, to add on more to that, to say since you said 2030, is it the right time of waiting till that or still things getting mature? So we'll get it from humble request where how, how humble innovators do things so that we don't want to wait till 2030. Can we get something groomed out 2020? So just as a piece of advice and uh, from my experience, I have seen that right from the 60s, although I was not born in the 60s, but seen everything, whether it's mainframe or client server, or uh, then the internet, 
uh, and now the full stack or big data or even the enterprise data warehouse, everything in technology has worked so far. Okay, there's nothing which hasn't worked in technology. Cloud first started in 2004. It took about eight years to get onto the peak of the Gartner hype curve, and today there's a decline. Declining means the technology has not declined. All enterprises today are using cloud. So I think as technologists, as, as we look at it, blockchain journey has just started. It is going to be a complete transformation as to how we implement it. And one thing about emerging tech is, instead of you know, just reading up a whole lot of PDFs or developing some PPTs, you have to take the shot. You can start with some POCs, you can start with some simple solutions, but you have to take the shot with emerging tech. Only then you will realize its full, full potential, and only then you can iterate and develop the model further. Uh, uh, and I think in India, uh, we, we need to you know, stop you know, talking about all the different theories about blockchain, whether it's decentralized, whether it's permissioned, and all that stuff. I think we got to start implementing uh, and build up the, help building up the sandboxes, uh, building up the APIs, building up the entire ecosystem, and, and take it ahead. Because face it or not, any, any hype tech has succeeded and this is going to be the same case with blockchain. Just like to add to the point what Prasanna had just mentioned some time back, uh, during the layman uh, era when uh, that uh, incident occurred, suddenly uh, you must have observed that across the globe all the regulators became very stringent and uh, technology uh, went in back foot. So this all innovation, be it uh, AI, machine learning or blockchain, that all were happening. But as the things come up, so gradually this all technology have started coming in various, uh, uh, through the various use cases. So in 90s, uh, when, as he said, that internet was uh, again uh, not so prominent and gradually it got a, a big stage and it has transformed the lives across the globe in the last uh, two, two decades or so. A similar kind of things can be expected from blockchain over a period of time. It's uh, more a matter of time. We'll have to wait and see how things are evolving because a lot of momentum, a lot of activities which are happening in the blockchain uh, space across the globe. Uh, regulators themselves, if I just have to add one of the uh, incident uh, last year, last to last year when uh, one of the public sector bank in India, uh, they had some uh, major uh, issues around uh, uh, one of the uh, payment secretary stuff posed that our regulators, they came up with multiple uh, master circular and guidelines wherein it was very clearly the mandate was that any systems, financial systems, payment systems, uh, wherever a message goes to the SWIFT, there, has, there shouldn't be any manual intervention at all. And posed that the regulator is continuously monitoring all the banks that how we are implementing and how we are giving an assurance to the board of directors as well as to the shareholder, stakeholders that yes, this particular requirement has been made. And believe me, this is one of the very stringent uh, STP kind of requirement wherein no manual intervention is expected by the regulator. So when you talk about no manual intervention expected for any kind of banking or financial transaction, then this kind of technology, when we talk about blockchain and all those, they are the right thing to say that uh, time only will say that how uh, we are taking it to the next great level. great views still we have the same view of uh, empowerment freedom for data center blockchain is there or still focus is going on so very quickly the technology works okay it's no longer emerging it is a proven technology cryptocurrency is the single biggest example that the technology works the point is we have to be bankers first technologists second and, uh, you know, one of, I had the opportunity of very recently meeting up with a set of founders who have come up with a fantastic use case of blockchain and AI, which is on fake news. And I think this is one of the biggest things that we are, most of us are struggling with. Uh, but what's it got to do with banking? So, so that was the let, point. Let us we, focus more on banking absolutely. than technology. Anyway, so we continue to do that. That's the point. Yeah. So, um. <laughs> 
Okay, uh, just to quickly add from a DC perspective, one area of concern with respect to blockchain has been in terms of its compute power. So whenever you look at the compute power, you would, you know, look at three things. You would look at the rental space for your servers, you would look at the compute process, and you would look at the power consumption. In terms of, uh, the, the, the biggest use case for your blockchain has been Bitcoin, and if you have to just pick up some figures, if you look at, there has been a Bitcoin energy consumption index which was published by Digiconomist, and if you look at it, it says that it would require some 0.32% of the world's total uh, power uh, requirement just for Bitcoin alone. So that's humongous. And looking at the processing speed, it gives you just seven transactions per second as compared to some 22,000 transactions which Visa, Visa processes. So, you know, these are the figures which needs to be optimized to a very great level before you can, you know, really look at ROIs from a technology uh, like this because a process power uh, is something which you would really want from a DC uh, perspective. And uh, also, uh, because if you have such huge power requirements, you would look at uh, cheap power resources, which would mean that you would get something like coal-based power from China, which would mean your carbon footprints and stuff like that. So, you know, there has to be a lot of uh, thought put into uh, this as well uh, while looking at the various uh, benefits of uh, the technology. So that was also something that I would like to submit. Again, great insights. At least we had enough on uh, at least blockchain rising towards the data center. Again, it's a, a proverb to end with. It's purely you people understand and use a right technology will take you to a complete situation. Use a technology which if you don't have a right technology, then it will put you to a finished state. So select something else, right partner, so that you are complete. If you select a wrong partner, you will be finished. You select a right technology and not use, you are completely finished. Keeping that as a proverb, it's purely us to select best technology to be in the right side and complete. Let us use the right technology. Thanks. thanks.